Hey, this is Emilio from Digital Bike Computing. We have got VMware Fusion running on a Mac and we're gonna be installing ESXi 7.0 within it. We're gonna go through those steps today, but before we do that, please remember to subscribe, clicking on that notification bell to be up to date with all of my video releases. Let's go through those steps right now. So we're gonna log into our Mac, and we're assuming that you've got a Mac ready to go, it's installed, you've got uh, VMware Fusion ready and installed. If you don't have Fusion, in my description, I've got a link to be able to go and download Fusion. Uh, you can try it for free, you can also buy it as well from my links below, uh, and that you've got an ISO of ESXi 7.0. If you don't have that, again, in my description, I've got a link to go and download that, and I also have another video on how to go and download ESXi, so you can check those out if you wanna do that, but we're assuming that's all ready to go. You've got your Mac, you've got Fusion, you've got your ISO for ESXi 7.0. So now let's cross over to our Mac and we go through those steps. So with the installer now downloaded, the next step is to go and uh, deploy this against your Fusion environment. So we do assume that you do have um, VMware Fusion installed. Uh, if you don't, uh, you can get this uh, from my link below in my description. I've got a link there to connect you into VMware Fusion. You can get that, you can try it completely for free, uh, and then you can uh, buy it if you so choose to. So we've got Fusion installed, so we're just gonna go ahead and open that. I'm gonna go to the top right-hand corner to my spotlight and open up Fusion. Here it is opened up. And now what we wanna do is we want to go and create a new VM. Now this, you'll see it's already a Windows 10 VM that I've got here with 64-bit. So in the top left-hand corner, you've got uh, your VMware Fusion taskbar at the top here in the Finder. And what we're gonna do is select File New. Now, of course, what we're gonna be doing is we're gonna be creating a brand new virtual machine uh, with uh, ESXi 7 running inside of it, inside your Mac. So what we're gonna do is we've got our ISO right here on my, um, on my desktop, wherever you may have it, all you really need to do is drag that into here and it's now going to be available so that you can use it to create a new virtual machine. You'll see that it is listed right here and it looks okay so far. You can go and select a different image if you have you know, dragged in the wrong one. From here, we're gonna select continue. We're now gonna select what version this is. Now this is uh, really just to customize the actual basic settings, how much RAM, CPU to allocate a VM. So you'll see that seven is not listed, which is completely fine. We're gonna select 6.x, which is the latest version as of this version of Fusion. It doesn't really matter necessarily. We can go and change the settings later on. So VMware ESX, ESXi 6.x and continue. We're gonna leave this as the default, okay? UEFI, which is the actual boot firmware that's going to be selected, continue. And here is the settings, okay? So you see it's gonna allocate a 40 gigabyte hard drive, which is really 40 gig of space within your Mac. So it's gonna allocate that space there. It's gonna use four gig of RAM from your Mac. Uh, the networking is going to be shared from your Mac's networking and it's gonna allocate two CPUs as well as a CD, DVD, and a USB controller. And from here, we can just select finish. You can change this later on, as I said, so that's not a problem. So let's just select finish. Now, where do we want to actually save this virtual machine? So you can save the actual uh, virtual machine anywhere you want, as long as it's in a secure place. And if you wanna be able to back it up, you wanna be able to select that. But I'm just saving it where it's telling me in virtual machines folder, and you can call it whatever we want. So we're gonna actually change the name to 7.0. Okay, just to make it easy. It's VMware ESXi 7.0 and save. Now, here starts the installer. So the installer has now kicked off. You'll see automatic boot is listed right there. And the actual installer is now commencing. So it's just really loading all the files that are needed to be able to build your ESXi 7 environment. You see at the top, looking good. It's got ESXi 7.0, and then you've got all the specs of the actual resources that, are, that have been allocated, which includes the CPU type, that is two, two CPUs, and four gig of memory has been allocated. So if everything has worked correctly in that initial um, setup, uh, you're now gonna be presented with the welcome screen. Welcome to the ESXi 7 installation. Enter to continue. Press F11 if you accept those terms and conditions. 
It's gonna scan for available devices and it's already found my uh, hard drive in there. Now, because I'm doing this in a completely virtual environment, um, I've allocated a 40 gig gig hard drive, but again, this can be really whatever size uh, that has been allocated or, or is available when you are deploying um, uh, this installation of ESXi 7. So we are okay with that. Now just keep in mind that whatever hard drive you're installing this on, it's going to format it and it's gonna delete all the data that's on here. So you will be uh, completely losing anything that's on here. So we're gonna select enter to continue. Gonna select your language. I'm gonna leave that as the US default. And now you put in your root password. So this is the password for your ESXi uh, login. So when you are logging into this ESXi host uh, over a web browser or over vCenter, it's gonna ask you for your root credentials. This is essentially the master password for your ESXi. So make sure that it's complex, long. The installer is configured to install 7.0 on that location, warning the disk will be, you know, will be repartitioned as we've said. So just press F11. Now the installation is commencing. So this won't take very long. So the installation is now complete. So you can remove the installation media before restarting uh, and then reboot the server. So here we are, ESXi 7.0 installed and it's ready to be used. You'll see that from there it says to manage this host, you go to that web address, which is my IP address, which has been uh, assigned to me automatically through DHCP. I would recommend going and setting a static IP address for your ESXi host. It's generally good practice to make this a static IP. Uh, it just makes a little bit more sense. And then I've got my uh, IP version six IP there as well. So we're gonna select F2 to customize system and view logs. That's in the bottom left-hand corner, F2. So we select that. It's gonna ask you now for your root uh, username and password. Now your password is what we've just set the root password to before. So we've got some system configuration. Uh, you configure your password, it's set, that's all fine. You can change it there if you need to. Under configure manage network, we're gonna select enter and we're gonna scroll down to IPv4 and enter. You'll see that it says use dynamic IPv4 address and address config and network configuration. So we're gonna go down to set static IPv4. We're gonna press the space bar and then down again. And now we can now select a IPv4 address. So make that something that is static, something that will be used as part of your environment. Once you've selected your IP address, we select OK. Now you can do a few other things in here. You can uh, you know, change your network adapter. If you do have more than one network adapter and you wanna say move a network cable between ports, you can do that. You can set up a VLAN uh, if it's optional. If you do want to use virtual LANs, uh, we're not gonna go through the details there, but it is a good feature to have. IP ver version six, if you even want it. In my case, I'm not gonna be using it. So I'm just gonna select disable and enter. Uh, if you wanna set your DNS, so mine is already picked up automatically, my DNS there as 192.168.2.2, but you can statically put in your DNS settings in there if you so choose to. Now we're gonna select escape. Now, because I have made some changes, it's going to ask me to reboot my host. So I'm gonna say yes to reboot it. Once it's restarted, we can go back into F2, into customization, put in your password. And there's a couple of other things you can do right from here. You can test your management configurations. You can configure your keyboard again, troubleshooting options if you do wanna go into the ESXi shell. Uh, you can enable SSH, things like that. Uh, and then a couple of other things around logs and information. But that is really the basic setup there for the, I guess for the back end of ESXi 7.0. The next step is now to open up a web browser so you can actually then go and navigate to this ESXi host from a nicer GUI front end. So we've now opened up a web browser on our Mac. Now, of course, because this Mac, uh, you know, the VM is running within the Mac itself, um, I can now navigate straight away to the ESXi host IP address to be able to access the backend nice and easily. So the IP was 192.168.2.100. So we've just thrown that into our address bar on the top. And then if you're happy with that, we now select enter. 
Now here's the first good sign is that it says that it's uh, trying to establish something. The connection is not private. That's because it doesn't have an SSL certificate assi you know, assigned to it. So I can just say show details and visit the site anyway, depending on the browser that you're using. If you're using Chrome, if you're using um, Internet Explorer, Edge, Firefox, it'll be very, very similar to what I'm doing here on Safari. But what we're just gonna go and visit the website and you're now presented with the login screen to VMware ESXi. If you're seeing this, it means that your computer has successfully established a connection to the ESXi host. If this website is not seen, then there is a problem somewhere. You may need to go back and diagnose the issue with why you can't see the ESXi host. It could be a firewall problem. It could be something else separate on your network connection. So make sure that the IP is correct and that you can see this login screen. Now we log in with our root credential again. So it's the same root credentials that you set prior. Here we are. So it's asking me if I want to um, participate in this customer experience. I'm not going to do that. You can do that if you want. So now this VMware installation of ESXi has now created a host. Essentially it's a server or an ESXi host, which is what we're gonna be calling it. And there's a whole bunch of information here all about your host around how much RAM CPU has been allocated. Um, you can go into manage, you can do some different customization settings. Um, and the other good thing is you can go right here into virtual machines and start building VMs. Now we're not gonna go into too much detail about the layout of this and what you can and can't do. I've got stacks of other videos in my VMware playlist that sort of goes through this. But in short, you've got your virtual machine section for creating and managing all your virtual machines. You've got your storage area, which is your, your data stores where you're actually going to be building uh, data stores, which is groups of disks together to then have your VMs, your virtual machines sitting within data stores and then networking, which is your networking configuration, essentially virtual NICs, virtual switches um, that are uh, providing network connectivity to your VMware environment and to your virtual machines. But that is really the basic steps. From here, you can then go and right click on host and you can shut down the host if you need to or this actual virtual machine so there you have it, that was my guide. Hopefully you were able to install ESXi 7.0 on your Mac using Fusion. It's definitely very, very cool and lets you build a whole bunch of virtual servers within the Fusion environment, within this ESXi host. But that's it for now. Please comment, like this video, subscribe to Digital by Computing, clicking on the notification bell to be kept up to date. Thanks again for watching. We'll see you next time.